Point of View is sponsored by Dalex Finance. Welcome to The Point of View. Today is our second main show in the week and we are your favorite current affairs show on television here in Ghana. We get the right guests, we ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. Today we've picked on a very important topic that requires your conversation and your contribution. We call this hashtag fix our roads now. Almost every day there's a comment from somebody across the country about the immutable nature of their roads. We're going to approach this in a very interesting way. I'm going to take you across the country on a roller coaster, showing you various kinds of routes. Then I'm going to pursue three angles to the road conversation. I'm going to pursue the political angle, the engineering design angle, and the financial angle, all within the next one hour. If you're watching and you want to contribute to the show, you can send us a comment on WhatsApp, the number we'll put on the screen shortly. And if you're watching on Facebook, you can also send us a comment underneath the stream. Stay with us. So I don't know whether it's because it's the month of October, but the number of people who've been agitating for good roads has increased quite significantly. And incidentally, last week, the people of Manhia, Boko Boko area in Accra, held a demonstration. We found out that actually, a year ago this week, they demonstrated over the same road. Not much has changed. I'll take you there first. And then later on, I'll take you to parts of the Volta region, where the Eastern Corridor Road has shown deterioration, because although the president promised to fix it by July, not much work has happened there. It's not all doom and gloom. Some roads have started. Obeche Bilamti roundabout has started. The famous school junction to Rawlings, Otano Road, has been done almost but we'll find out from Parliament why the Cocoa Roads are still in such a bad shape. And I also have an engineer in studio. He's called Engineer Abdullah Mahama. He'll help us appreciate some of the design issues that we'll be looking at. Engineer, great to have you on the show. Good evening. Good evening. He's my resident road engineer. I speak to him when I have problems with roads. <laughs> but let's start with Man here. It's part of Ga West. A week and a few days ago, they held a demonstration. In fact, they've agitated in the past few months over the nature of the arose, Philip Latte was there and he brings us this report. Chose to stay at home. Some portions of the road were blocked with burning ties. This is the umpteenth time they have protested, demanding the fixing of their roads. Uh, I'm just trying to use my voice or the little I have to plead with the president, to plead with the road minister, to plead with the MP, and all those matters that we beg them. This is not about politics. It's about we, the citizens. I'm no more going to sit on the stand so that you call me a spectator. I'm not a citizen. So I say, I plead with the president to come to our aid. If he can see it, anybody that sees this video should help us. Because people of Anya constituency, so to Anya constituency, all the way to Mahia, all the way to Insawam, all the way to what the Joma, we are suffering. Please, we are begging you, we are begging you, we are pleading with you, have mercy on so, us. So, um, say, after this, um, this one happens a number of times, you do this demonstration or you embark on this kind of protest for a very long time. And today you are kneeling down to beg this president and the various stakeholders. How soon do you want this road fixed? As soon as uh, today. If from today they can move the tracks to the road and start fixing it, we'll be happy. Because when this road is done, uh, development that you are talking about, it is about road, it's about logistics, it's about distance, it's nothing else. What kind of development is this? That if, for instance, we have a, a hospital, a newly built hospital there. So, assuming I'm sick and I want to go to the hospital, how will I go? Can, do you think a pregnant woman can, can use this road? No. So, if you think you are coming to develop us, uh, the, the, the country, this is part of it. This is part of it. This is part of development. The situation is very, very bad. We have to walk from Afuamai to Abrekuma Junction. It will take you more than one and a half hours. Even the cars, if you take Trotro, it's more than one hour. Instead of taking about 20 or 15 minutes, it will take you more than one hour. So look at how we are walking. 
the situation you are in. You have to work from a broke man to a, a former. That is the problem we are. Is it that government is not paying attention to this road? Because we understand that you've called for the fixing of the road several times. Actually, I don't know whether the contract is more than the, MC, uh, the assembly or the government supposed to come in. We don't know. Every time we want to the MC, he says it's on contract. It's on contract. In order to have every commercial driver in these communities abide by the directive, one of the leaders of the driver's union, Samuel Efrifa, was stationed in the middle of the deployable road to ensure that no commercial vehicle is seen on the stretch. I am doing this because of lack of maintenance on this road. We have been here for a long time. Always lies. Always lies. I'm a driver. I'm working over here. You, have, have you seen my, my, my personal driver? I stop him. Today, we are doing this demonstration until they have settled this road. Look at the road. They have finished Goddess. Here, yeah, they have finished it. I have to uh, a foreman and my uh, in Sakina. They have already finished the Goddess. What 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 lack them to pour all these uh, 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 stones on this road? At least, as for this this place, we own ourselves. We, the GPR two members over here, it, we suffer. We manage our own affairs. So right now, we have accepted that we won't go Accra, Kaneshi, Ablekuma. It's our own cars. The cars within my territory, because I am taking tax from them. And uh, do you understand with me? So any GPR two car that I know, even Okada, we they are all, all registered. So I know them. So that's why I'm stopping them. We don't want to work until they are starting this road. Some of the drivers could not hide their frustrations. We are those who voted for them. If you could remember, we are the same drivers who created drivers for change 2016, prior to the 2016 election. We work and we work for them. We are sending this strong signal to the president that if nothing is done on this road, we are going to do a massive and therefore a bloody demonstration in this constituency. And is it going to affect elections? Yes. How is it going to affect the elections? We are going to advise our people that they shouldn't go out and vote. We have wives, we have family members. We are going to tell everybody that no one should step out 2020 to go and vote. From past 12 years now, this road has been thought that they have made the road. But as you can see, the road has not been completed. But now, Matemi do. this is your work. This is the work that we gave to you. This is the work that president gave it to you. So are you coming to pass the road that the, this road has completed? No, that is no. They have not made any this road. So now, as you can see, uh, the, all the chief has been, all the uh, frustrated. So now they are made the demonstration now. So uh, two weeks now, if they will not come and do something on this road, they think the, the demonstration will be more than this. To further drum home their concerns, the traditional leaders of the communities held a press conference. The Afwaman secretary, Nye Kwate Kwate, who spoke on behalf of the traditional leaders, threatened another massive demonstration in two weeks' time if work does not start on the road. We assure you, I repeat, we assure you, Mr. President, that if the work do not start on this road, in two weeks time from now i repeat in two weeks now from now we shall no longer have any other option than to embark on full demonstration the traditional leaders after the press conference presented a petition to the municipal chief executive for gun west clement wilkinson this is the first time they have presented a petition to my office the first one, they did a demonstration, general demonstration, which everyone is aware. And this is the second one, they, they, they just did a press conference telling me what really they want on the, that side. Even though I'm aware, I knew what is going on there. It's always about the road. So I promised them, and I know my government is going to fix the road. I've already told them that they should be extra patients for me. And that road is one of the headaches that I have in the municipal assembly. By next week, I'm going to introduce the contractor to them. And um, introducing the contractor, I will invite you so that all of us will know the, the timeline, when we are going to start and when we are going to finish.
After the meeting with the MC for the Gang West municipality, I'm here with the Maihia linguist, say the Maihia Ochami, whose name is Ni Aite Animli, to ask him if they are satisfied with the response from the MC. You're welcome. Thank you. Are you satisfied with the response from the MC? Well, he has said it. He has said it. And we are waiting to see the machines on the road before I'll be satisfied. We've already told them that we don't want any gravels on the road. We don't want grading on the road. We only want asphalt on the road. Because as is rightly said, the, the, the number of people around the area is over 30,000. So if you, you, you just grade the road, tomorrow the road will be spoiled again. So the vehicle behind me, the driver has been asked to um, alight his passengers because he's not obeying the directive given by the youth and the residents in this area not to drive today. They are burning ties on the stretch to ensure that no vehicle plies on this route. They are just asking that government should fix the road as soon as possible, else they would boycott the 2020 elections. Reporting for City News, my name is Philip Nielate. So that was Philip Nielate's report from my here. Now, we, we will start the discussion around places in the greater Accra region. Later on, we'll go to the Ashanti region, eventually end up in the northern part of the country. Now, I'm going to take you to Santo as well, because it would seem as if the bad roads become worse the further you move from the center. So my here on Boko Boko is essentially Ga West, moving out of Accra. Santor is also like that, if you look on the Google map. And I'll take you to Atadeka, Washington area in Ashaiman. And Abokobi, they all seem to have the same problem. Caleb Kuda visited Santor a couple of weeks ago to check out their road. It wasn't a pretty sight. After that chilling welcome to Nanakom, we set off for Santor. The Nanakrum East Legon Hills Santor Road, which eventually leads to Ashaiman, is approximately 13 kilometers. Taking a ride on the road proved challenging as we had to drive carefully not to return with broken back axles nor badly affected shock absorbers. The road users, especially the drivers who saw our branded vehicle, were not sure of what to expect for fear that we may be on a war against a discipline campaign to arrest those found culpable of traffic infractions. But after allaying their fears, many of them opened up to us on how their inaccessible road has affected their lives. I think the, the, the government need to do more. What was the experience like driving on the road? Rough. It's like a manhole, not portals, like big, big, big manholes. You know what I'm this is your road. I'm told it's very good. This road is very good. <laughs> this road is very good. Santo Road. Santo Road. It's never good. Very, very bad. One of the poorest, uh, poorest roads we had in this country. You see? You see the motorway? This road is also the shortest way to Ashama. Then you can even link it Tema. to Tema. Mahama started, he started it. But because of the change of government, I don't know what happened. They have abandoned the road again. When it rains heavily, I, I, I don't normally go to town because of the, the, the road. If I have anything to do, I just make phone calls and that is it. Because I can't use my car on the road when it rains. So bad. At times it's like, it's, it's like <laughs> sheep in the sea. You see the cars, you won't see ties. You only see the vehicle on top of the water, the flood. It's so bad. And sometimes when I want to reinforce uh, their sofa because the road is no good. Sometimes you can't get a car. When I'm taking my children to the school, so my, my, my children is in uh, other school, academy, uh, academy. Some school there, uh, if you cross the bridge, you know, if you're there, the sofa, I don't have a car too. If it's motor, I have. If it's the thing where they worry me with that. So the road is no good? Eh? It's no good at all. When they, they, they graded this road, I could drive from my area mm -hmm. to, um, what's the name, uh, they got call it gate, within five minutes. But now it, I take more than 20 minutes to drive from my place to that same place. That should have taken me five minutes. Not talking about um, the shocks and all the parts that we need to...
So we move from Ablekuma Mahian across to Santo Ashaiman. Now, if you continued from Santo to Ashaiman, you would end up at a place called Atadeka. And they have very interesting names like Washington and Jerusalem and things. Elvis Washington actually has been filing reports almost every quarter. He compiled his reports around Tema to paint a very gloomy picture of the situation in that area. Check it out. Several roads within the Tema metropolis and its adjoining municipalities are going from bad to worse. In the Tema metropolis, for instance, although most of the roads are being tarred and asphalted, there are quite a few which are in a very deplorable state and equally require urgent attention. One of such roads is the Valku roundabout through the Tema oil refinery to Pong. This road serves Valku, the Tema oil refinery, Aluex, and other major oil marketing companies, including Asogli Power. It also links the main Pung Township from the central business area in Tema. But the road is not in the best of shapes. Workers and the numerous operators of heavy-duty trucks say this is a huge inconvenience to them. The truck drivers say they are often forced to move at a very slow pace because of the nature of the road to avoid accidents. Please, we load from May Harbor to the warehouse. But the road is not good. Many companies have the road. They are deciding, they are discharging rice, sugar, oil, iron rods, many things in the road. The road oh, is so spoiled. So we, do, we went this afternoon to send the goods to the warehouse. And they tell the road to break the whole goods to the ground. Now we, now we are here. We are so many deaths in the road here now. See the rice oils in the ground. So we are begging the the government to just help us more. We are so suffering there. But the road is very, very bad. Not one year, not two years, not three years, not for for, for long. Even, you see, this uh, uh, rice, they try some uh, big rice, some loot rice and other things. Before they enter the port, the, the whole thing. The situation is no different within the Punkatamansu municipality, but unlike the Tema metropolis, where many of the roads are more trouble except a few, many of these roads here are bad. The Pung barrier to Michel Camp Road is a typical example. This road was started in 2016, just before the election, but it has gone bad again, as though it has never seen any bitumen and gravel. Huge potholes have taken over the entire stretch, some drivers who use the road spoke to City News. This road is one of the worst roads that we are on. And I should say, we are all taxpayers in this country. So if we are paying tax around this area, I mean, we pay tax. And these are the roads that we, our cars and people move on. I mean, it's not a good thing at all. It's time for us to sit down. I have a change of mind. Wow. So those were scenes from the Bon Katamanso area. F let me give you a final one in this series. This is a place called Ashoman, pure water. And it's as if the, the worse the roads, the more wild the names. So <laughs> they call it Ashoman, pure water. Fremai Dunyami went to do CNR, our news bulletin from there. Here's a quick excerpt of her interaction with residents in the area as they try to navigate the pure water road. Information I've gathered so far indicates that when it rains, due to the poor nature of the road, there's terrible floods in the area. And um, it's interesting to note that this road was captured in the 2019 budget, but so far nothing has been done about it. As a result, residents have been compelled to raise monies themselves to find a solution to it. And that has resulted in the construction of where I am standing currently. I am going to be going round to talk to residents who are part of this construction work and find out what motivated them to do this and how speedily work is progressing and how all the problems that are in this area and the bad nature of the road is affecting their businesses. I have a lady here with me who runs this shop and I'm going to find out from her how this whole situation is impacting on her business. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ma What's your name? My name is Madam Felicia Isidu. Madam Felicia, 
I have seen the road. In fact, when I was coming in, it was quite terrible for me. You live here, and I've gathered that residents have contributed to put up this drain. Are you aware of this? We are very, very aware because for a long time when we stay here, mm. this road is not completed. And at the same time, when it was raining season, we find things very difficult in this area. Mm. And I mean, I mean, I Okay. Okay. How is experience on the road has been? Do you live around? Yeah, I live around. Okay, so how often do you use this road in a day? Um, like two or three times in a day, depending on my route. All right, so describe your experience when you are driving on this road to me. So um, the road is very bad, as the cameraman can already see. And then um, it slows you down, especially in the morning during the peak hours from 6 to about 7, when most workers are now heading for a car. You, you can spend about 30 minutes on the stretch yeah. because of the... So that was a famous report. Let me start with Engineer Mahama in the studio. Later on, we'll go to Parliament. Do you, what's, what do you notice is the similarity between these places? We did uh, Mahi and Ablekuma. We did parts of Ashaiman. We did Santo. We did a showman. I had reports on Abokobi, but I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done Abokobi roads as well. They're, they're pretty bad. Mm -hmm. What is the similarity between these areas, and why are these roads in such a terrible state? Well, good evening to your viewers. Uh, I think that we have one similar problem. Mm. The first one has to be the planning schemes of all these arterial roads, which are supposed to link out to the highways. Um, if you notice what is happening, the development is much higher advanced than the planning authorities planning. So more or less, they're always chasing the individuals who are, who are constructing their bodies. If you look at the Amreha one, the Santon one, Ashama, and then the, uh, the Abokobi one. Um, I've, I've been driving extensively within these areas, and it looks like the authorities at the assemblies, either through the land use and special order authority, are really always settling to see that those uh, individuals have actually done their construction before they, they move with them. The issue is that when we do that, government has a problem in trying to now demarcate the roads and then compensate. So they leave the people to do their development until some maybe 5, 10, 15 years when government now realizing that, hey, there's a problem. Before, before you get to that stage, even to maneuver through houses and demolish is a problem. That's one of the things. And secondly, um, the, the way and manner in which we award the contract. You see, it looks like the last year to the elections, almost from time that I, at least I've been matured enough, the promises of the last year becomes too much. So we, we, we cut sword for like, maybe instead of cutting sword for like 10 projects, we cut for like 30, 40. And then we start by just going to cut sword. We start some drains, one kilometer we leave, we go to other side. And if, if you start a drain, from one area where you are intercepting the water and you leave it like that. That's one of the problems you have because water runs on the surface and leaves a problem. And then secondly, almost all the local assemblies are not helping their government. Mm. You, you see, most of them have this well-equipped uh, graders that could have been used to actually suppress the problem by doing routine grading, which is what we call, what we call routine maintenance. If you go to all the local assemblies now, the girders are packed there, and they, they have grown, the wheels have grown beyond the ties. If you go to my area, for instance, like in Sawam, the girder is one of the best because it has a front blade and a middle blade. But they are not using them? For the past three years. They've just been lying I'm idle. told there's some, some, a path which has just gone bad. Meanwhile, this machine was being used as a rent machine. So the assembly could have been renting this machine. And at the same time, you don't need up to 1,200 Ghana cities a diesel to even a grade about three kilometers of a road in a day. 1,200 Ghana cities. But the machine is stacked. I remember the one that I'm just talking about in Sawam. 
I used to hire it when we were doing the construction of the uh, San Lord uh, car park. And about uh, 3,000 Ghana cities a day mm. because of the special. You know, most of them, most of them come with a middle blade. So in that case, when you are doing the road and you are confined with areas, you are restricted to do the grading. But the few ones that come with the front blade and the middle blade are very, very scarce in the system. And this is what the government... So you've problem. identified three things. The first one is the fact that development is going ahead of planning. Yes. Then you're saying some of the contracts are haphazardly awarded. Yes. And then you're saying the local assemblies are not the proactive initiative. enough. No initiative. Yes. Great. I'm going to take viewers to July 2018. While touring the Volta region, President Akufuado had quite a bad experience. So he summoned his road minister and the regional minister and had an interaction with them about why the Eastern Corridor Road was so bad. Now, I got this uh, film from UTV. I'm going to show it to you. Then I'm going to take you to show you what the Volta region is looking like now <laughs> because he, he gave an order for the road to be fixed. So this is what happened when the president, on his way to Hohoe area, used the Eastern Corridor Road. stretch of the road and is under uh, Coco Road. But when we came to power, you know, there were a lot of problems with the Coco Road. So Coco Board had to stop work and to do rasterization. They did it across the nation, so work stored here. Now the rasterization report is out and Rodida Company was exonerated you know, from any uh, malfeasance, any malpractices, and I've been holding meetings with my colleague, the sector minister. So we are going to ask them to come back. We are arranging and working hard to face some outstanding deaths to them so that they can come back and continue the work. You know the rough road we have traveled on. That is the background. you anticipate? these things happening and them coming back to continue the work. Mr. So President, I am taking step that within the next two weeks, no, or even less, we are going to issue uh, instructions for them to resume work to, to continue. By paying them something? Yes, by, by paying them something. I, 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 I can assure them in your presence you know, that we are taking those steps. Within two weeks? Yes, within two weeks, we should arrange some payments uh, for them. And that even if we have to uh, support uh, Coco Port for the meantime, you know, through the road fund to get them something, you know, we, we are going to do that. As of now, what has been certified on this road is, is around uh, 15 million now. At least if we are able to release that to them. The total is, is about, about 112. Uh, so far, in fact, under the NDC, they, they were paid, I think, a, a, a portrait of, was it 10, 10, 10 million or something? It was 38 times, minus 15. Ma it's no, left with 15 to be paid. Yeah, that was the part of, of, of the mobilization. So the outstanding one now is about 15, which we are trying to uh, uh, clear so that uh, that's what they come from. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And if you're able to get, get them back. So that was uh, Honorable Amakwanta. Standing next to him was Damboche, who was listening quite intently. Then you had uh, Kinsley Lecher, the minister for Volta Region, the president and the contractor. Well, he told the president that in two weeks, they would <laughs> start work. Our reporter tells us nothing has happened on that road. And in fact, I, I went to parliament today to speak to the committee. So I spoke to the ranking member on the committee for roads, his member for, for Adaklu. And his first complaint had to do with the Eastern Corridor Road, the same road that the minister was talking about. Here's an excerpt of my conversation with Kwame Agboja. Since 2017, and I might say that not much work was going on even before 2017, as a matter of fact. Uh, 2017, I am not aware that any significant work uh, has been going on on that uh, particular road. Uh, the, the sad uh, part of it was that uh, 
where the contractors got to before works were suspended, things have deteriorated further. So even if you were to pay the contractor today and ask them to go to site, they might have to spend a lot of time and money bringing it up to the level they were before things deteriorated. Government in, uh, since 2017 have uh, made various comments about uh, what their intentions were in terms of completing the Eastern Corridor Road. You will notice under their famous uh, Sino-Hydro deal, which I still consider uh, not fit for purpose because the, the method of funding would, for me, still looks uh, uh, not sustainable. Uh, bauxite down there, nobody knows how much bauxite, and we're supposed to use the proceeds of bauxite to repay the, the financier. So no wonder the president went around the country and cut sort. But um, as far as I'm aware, it's only in Tamale that that interchange project is going on. No other project is going on. A portion of Eastern Corridor, which was uh, supposed to be done by an Israeli company, uh, who I think are still on site, was captured as part of the projects that were going to be uh, done under the Sino Hydro. Though at the time the NDC was leaving office, we thought a sustainable way of funding it would have been through the Coco uh, Road project. Uh, and uh, the contractor mobilized and was working, though not at the pace that uh, was, was expected, but they were on site uh, working. And uh, we were told that is uh, part of Sino Hydro and the uh, pop and pageantry. The president and the finance minister, the road minister, come to parliament and taunt, uh, especially members of parliament from Volta Region, that look, you couldn't finish it, we are coming to finish it. As we speak, there's not a shovel on that uh, road and it's deteriorated. The minister said they were making available 1.3 billion cities to the road ministry. So, how are they able to pay 2 billion cities out of 1.3 billion uh, cities? So, is it the finance minister saying that? They are going to find money outside of the budget. Because if you were to go to the ministry right now, the releases in attachment to the budget are not even halfway yet. So where are they going to get the money from? So curiously, whenever I hear them say there's $2 billion available, there's $1.6 billion available, I ask the question, where is the source of uh, the funding? Because data from controller doesn't show that there's any money available like that. So far, they've been paying some money from the road fund. And I'm told the uh, finance ministry has also paid some money. But I am not aware of availability of any two billion as I speak today to pay contractors. Okay. L let me end by asking you about the Coco Road audit. Yes. Because that was quite a major issue. And we were told that the government wanted to be sure that Coco Roads were actually Coco Roads. Because we were told that there were certain roads which were not even in Coco Green areas which were put on that list. Has the committee received a report of the Cocoa Road audit? And do we know the status of Cocoa Road as we speak? Well, very good uh, question. Uh, sometime in 2017, uh, the committee met with uh, Chief Executive of Cocoa Board and some of his uh, uh, colleagues in Parliament here. And he made very wild allegations, including the fact that uh, they have discovered that uh, under the NDC, the almost 200 uh, individual Coco Road pro project, uh, some of the contracts were inflated. He used the word inflated, he said it publicly. And some of the roads didn't even exist, and then we awarded them on contract. Uh, I, as a minority spokesperson on road and transport, knowing the facts, I took them on until today. I am aware that they've uh, contracted some uh, members of the, their party to review that project. Uh, we are here to determine whether they were even procured appropriately according to the Procurement Act and uh, doled out some money to them. Recently, they came out disputing the quantum of money that was paid to the, uh, uh, the, the reviewing entity. But the fact is that not a single Coco Road project, as we speak, contract have been identified as having been procured fraudulently. Sadly, my brother, we went around the country a bit, went to Western region. There were Coco Road projects that were 100% complete. The government told the contractors we won't take over because we are doing review. There were Cocoa Road that were 98% complete. Just, if it's 98%, maybe it's just road furniture and line marking. The government said we will not take over. The contractor must hold on to it because we are doing Cocoa Road review. So three years down the road, the government is unable to publish the report of the Cocoa Road. The committee asked many times, I filed a question, they will never answer the question. It's simply because they lied to the people of this country that under the president, under President Mahama, something and what went on in terms of Cocoa Road. So today, they said that the projects were more than the, the amount available from Cocoa Road. My brother, this is a simple thing. We awarded projects that some of them will be completed in five years. 
cocoa syndicated loan comes in every year, approximately 1.2 billion. So as long as we grow cocoa, we would be able to pay for the amounts. So nobody was saying that the amount, the, the value of the contract that were awarded was supposed to pay in a year. So I don't know why NDP gave the impression that, oh, the, um, the, the value of the contract were more than the, the, the cocoa syndicated loan. We never said that. So we are in a very big situation. I can give you this. The state of Ghanaian growth has never been this worse. And right from the city in Accra here, every corner, because if you look through the budget, the performance in terms of routine maintenance is falling behind schedule. In 2017, they fell behind schedule. In 2018, they fell behind schedule. We are in 2019 now. The releases will suggest that we are going to fall behind schedule. And the, the effect of that is that our roads are in very... So that was Kwame Agboja. He's a ranking member on the Parliamentary Committee on Roads and Transportation. This is still the point of view. We're taking around the country. When we come back, we're going to Ashanti, and then we'll go up north. My guest is still in the studio. And then we'll speak to the chairman of the committee in Parliament on what government is doing. And we'll ask him also whether the Sino-Hydro money is coming, because it's been quite a while since that announcement was made. This is the point of view. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Point of View. Tonight we're trying to do a quick round trip across the country. We don't have enough time to do this, to give you a state of the roads. Let me read a few headlines on roads. It gives you a sense of the extent of the problem. So, of course, in the past few months, residents of Tessie still in distress over deplorable Lekma Road, although the road started. And then Ablikumamahia residents burn tires to protest terrible roads. We brought you that story earlier. In the Volta region, Chonke chiefs, Appeal for motorable roads. That's from the voter region. And Anum Apapem group takes on Ayensuanu MP over poor roads. Sisala youth threaten them over bad roads. Tumu residents demand good roads ahead of Akufado's visit. Gomwanyanyan residents demonstrate over poor roads. Cabinet approves 55 million euro facility to rehabilitate Gomasi roads. Uh, Kretekrachi residents worried over their deplorable roads. Fix our bad roads, northern east region chiefs to government. Dowenya residents demonstrate against bad roads. Shama residents complain as demo over poor roads disrupts travel. There's, there's too many stories. Let me take you quickly to the Ashanti region, and then we'll talk about that particular place. So in Ashanti region, we had our reporter, Edward Mafo. Ebuakwatano, so if, you, if on the heritage caravan we drove from Sunyani, we passed through... Uh, entering Kumasi through Ebuakwa. We spent a lot of time just entering through Kumasi. Here's an update on the situation on that road. Construction works on this stretch started 12 years ago under then President John Ajekum Kofo, but the work is yet to be completed as a major stretch that links the Ashanti region to three other regions, namely Western North, Ahafu. And Bono regions, commuters are always compelled to endure heavy vehicular congestion. Those who ply the road say it is not spacious enough, and since construction works have halted for years, they spend more hours in traffic for a distance that should take less time. They want governments to complete the project, which has unduly delayed. It's terrible. You see how it is. You will have to spend about two hours from here before you get to Ebuawa. But I can use the same two hours if it weren't for the traffic to reach me. Meaning somebody in Ebuakwa will be in Sunyani long before I get to Ebuakwa. You see, it's, it's not normal. It's abnormal. From KJT to, uh, to uh, Thanos. So Thanos. So you maybe spend like 30 minutes. You 20 spend average at least. Down, 20 down. minutes will do. Yeah. Okay. But right now, you have to take about one and a half hours to reach here. It's been a headache to all of us here because looking at the nature of the road, it has been there for a very long time. Taxpayers have been paying taxes. And we have not seen we, we are not seeing what we are supposed to get. These are some of the things that for the past two years the government is not achieving its target for the, the revenue tax revenue. When you look at the revenue, we are not getting it because because people are not seeing, we are not feeling how much we are paying. We, we don't feel it. Physically we don't see it. When you look at it, look at the road that we are we are we, we are applying on. The cars, we are spoiling our cars, we are all uh, here and there, you'll be going to fitting shop. Mechanics will come to you and they will spend a lot of So that was a report from Edward Marfo. And this is 
Kumasi proper. So this is not just a situation with urban areas. If you go to the Wahan Tumu, indeed, the road that connects the Upper East to the Upper West region, Fentu Tayu did a report on this last year. Well, our regional correspondent, Muhammad Latif, went there a few days ago, and the situation hasn't really improved. Traveling on this road is not only a nightmare for commuters, but a financial drain to drivers and vehicle owners, as they hardly will make a safe trip without a breakdown. This is what travelers go through before getting to their destinations. This driver has been plying the road for the past 10 years. My friend, we are So, we are going to go to the road. We are going to go to the road. We are going to go so <laughs> Commuters who ply the road also spoke to City News about their frustrations. My name is Joseph S.K. Actually, this road here is one of the poorest roads that we can find in the country. As you have seen, this is not the first time. Always this is what is happening. We are now stuck, and we have to go to work and do productive work to save, to, to save certain issues and also try to help issues in Madagascar. But now look at the way we are now stuck here. And this is not the first time. It has been wow, so that was a Wahan Tumu Road. A year down the line, not much has changed. Let's read some of your comments. Good evening, Bernard. It's worrying and a torture to be a resident in such areas. When will these politicians take their own words serious and stop toying with Ghanaians? I think the intentions of the political administration of this country is to fulfill their own political parties' agendas than the interests and woes of the ordinary Ghanaian. Kama will purge them out. This is coming in from Kelly Chifopraso. Good evening, Bernard. Almost every region is experiencing bad roads. Ben, some of the roads are just a, year's, a year old, yet they are extremely bad. My simple suggestion is that every contract that is awarded to a contractor, the contractor should sign 10-year bond when the road develops spot holes. The contractor should return to site. With this phenomenon, the contractor will do quality work. Prince in Kofredia, good evening. Please, what is the status of the Tamale Interchange and Asano Hydro? They just started. Uh, we don't know how far work has gone. Ben, our roads in the eastern region are very bad, especially Kofredia, Tunkrakai, Botifos, Asesewa, Agogo, and Somanya. So I want to ask, when will our roads be fixed? Because it's not even in the budget. And don't know if it will be in the 2020 budget. Hashtag fix our roads now. Andy from Tantra Hill. Bello, hello, Bernard. Please don't complete the show without mentioning the whole Akofu Peve Road. That road is a threat to humans and vehicles. Our leaders must set up. Kojo in Truba says, Good evening, Bernard. Please tell the government to inform the president that me, I can pay my ward fee, so you should exempt my ward from free SHS and use the money to build a bridge for me, which has broken down for a year now. L Limex Query Bridge in Kumasi. Um, more comments. As for the Eastern Corridor Road, the least said about it, the better. The road is just too good to complain about. We like it. We will show our appreciation in 2020, Jacob Akutu. Engineer, yeah. is it me or this year there's more complaints about bad roads? Is it that the media has given them more prominence or there hasn't been that much maintenance? No, is it in the, the road components? If you, you miss one target of the routine maintenance, mm. if you don't take it, you cannot catch up. Okay. So you could see that last year, there was not so much funds released for the maintenance of the roads last year. Mm. That is why we are having this effect this year. Because the rains came in last year, they came in October, just like this year, and we couldn't tackle it well. It came in January, um, what do you call it, June, July this year, and we're in October again. 
And the, the, fact, the fact that the ruins are devastating enough is also a problem. So if, if the technocrats give out that, that their scheme, I mean their uh, maintenance um, structure, and the ministry does not actually release money on time, you cannot catch up with the... the, the, the so when you miss one uh, schedule... Yeah, that rippling effects. And be because they were doing the audits, yes. they didn't do the maintenance on time. As for the audit, those goods for the cocoa roots, it was a big failure. And I've been ranting on this for long. If you want to stop the uh, projects and an audit, at the end of the day, you might be paying double or triple the cost for maintaining such roads. Because some of the roads may be in their first layer. You know, when you do primacy, the first uh, bitumen that experience is on the road. You need about six weeks to two months mm -hmm. to have, for the bitumen to have evaporated the oxidation. Mm -hmm. Then you put on the second layer. If you don't do that, and after one or because you see, people say that the roads are not good. When you do the first layer, the second coat has to come within about a month so that you, you start to get the thickness. If you don't do that and cars just go on that road and they apply the brakes, they go back to the gravel. So when the contractor is paid after one year, he has to come back and re reshape all the way to like the, the, the last base material and reapply the seal, the primer seal to it. And that will go straight to the coffers of government. Because if a contractor suspends work and citing in the clause of contract, the fact that you have not paid him. You know, before the contractor will stop with, he will cite uh, an advance notice to you that I'm reducing the workload. After 20 days, he's mandated by the contract to suspend. And once he suspends the works, you are liable to pay any amount of money. That will be so government announced that it was paying $2.2 billion. The story says finance ministry collects debt owed road contractors. From January to August, they paid $1.2 billion in the road sector. They said it's the highest ever any government has paid. And then they mentioned other amounts they had paid. But it seems as if listening to the NDC MP, because you are paying somebody an arrears, yeah. he's not really going to fix the, do, do a new road no. because you are paying for work is already done. Yeah. So how does that work? You see, I, I, I heard you, I think last week, when you said that the contract should go back to work. You know when the contract goes for a line of credit, like the banks, that's the first one. He might be loaning money for material from Gassem. He has to go to Takradi, Shell, and Tota to get bitumen. And even other things that you use in the office. So anytime he's paid his outstanding arrears, the banks are ready. You see, there's a clause. You know, the, the, the client has to pay through the banks. Mm -hmm. And the banks have given the contractor a loan. There's this format. When the money just hit the account, it doesn't even go to the contractor. You cannot you submit any other account number other than the one which was actually um, in the contract. So the money doesn't come to you. It may not go your, to the your, contractor. Your bank will collect Unless, it. Unless, of course, you have surplus. Unless some jara comes on top. Of course, if you are owing $10 million or $10 million to the, the, any bank at all, and after one year, you're already paying the compound interest, mm. Mm. it hits their bank account in less than one minute, it's gone. The, wow. the, the, the bank may call you through their estate management. And so maybe we think that like we can give you part of that money to go back and lose so that you can raise another certificate. That's when he has a, the, the, the information that maybe this time around, government is going to speed up with the payment. The contractors are suffering in this country. I'll, the I'll, amount of money they owe the contractors in this country, Bernard. I'm going to take a short break. When I come back, I'm going to get government response to all of this. So I went back into parliament to speak to the uh, chairman of the Roads Committee. He's the man who's been working with the Roads Ministry to try and resolve these issues. We'll play his, uh, we'll, we'll get his comments when we come back. This is the point of view, stay with us. Welcome back, we're still on the point of view, trying to unravel the state of our roads, hashtag fix our roads now. So why are our roads so bad all over the country? Why are so many people complaining? And why are contractors, some of them, even dying before their time? Parliament Committee on Roads is a very powerful committee. I met with the chairman. He's called Samo Ayepaye, and I put these questions to him. Here are his comments. The Ministry of Roads and Highways, uh, ever since I became a member of that committee in the fifth parliament, uh, now that I'm the chairman, the average uh, approver of uh, uh, money to the Roast and uh, Transport, Roast and Highways Committee is about 500 million Ghana cities, averaging. So if we come to power and we see commitment of 17 billion 
you get my brain. 500, 500 million, million Ghana cities a year. Mm -hmm. And then we see commitment of 17 billion. It means, when we're talking about road debt commitments, it's not about the debt alone. It is about work that has been done and has not been paid for. Plus, the whole contract that has been awarded, which has not been done. As soon as you sign the contract, and contractors accept the agreement, it becomes the contract sums to put together becomes the commitment. So if the MPP government sits and decides not to award any contract, but to pay for contract that have been awarded, it means we have to take 500 million CDs a year to pay for 8, 17 billion, making 34 years. And nobody should do this. The previous government came to parliament and asked parliament to approve a loan of 1.3 billion US dollars for Okoye season. In that document, they said they are going to use 1.6 billion Ghana cities, not dollars. The whole amount was 1.3 billion dollars. Out of that money, they are, they are going to use, they said they will use 1.6 billion for cocoa rose. They ended up awarding cocoa contract to the tune of 5.1 billion. Wow. It means if you take the whole 1.3 billion dollars, and you decide not to buy cocoa beans. You decide not to buy cocoa inputs. You decide not to do anything related to cocoa production itself. That money can't even pay for the cocoa uh, for, uh, wood contractors. From the, what I've seen from both the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Roads and Highways, by the close of uh, this next month, November, most of these contractors will be paid. That should also not suggest that we're not paying anything at all. The last time I checked from the Ministry of Roads and Highways, ever since we came to power from 2017, we have paid a whipping sum of 3 point something billion, about 3.2 or something billion to contractors. Except that the debt were so huge. And you know, payment of contractors, as you pay them, two things get the debt increase. F work, you see, once you pay them, some of them are still working. And they'll keep on raising certificates. So when they raise certificates, it adds up to their debts. And we call something called interest on delayed payments. When contractor go for a loan to build your road for you, and you don't pay him, the interest that the bank charges on the, in, uh, the loan that he has taken from the bank, that same, uh, uh, how do you call it, he will pass on the interest to the employer. So these are some of the things that also gets, uh, but I have to say, and uh, thanks our contractors, most of them that I've spoken to have never and have, haven't added any uh, uh, interest on the late payment to government. They are of the view that they are working with government and they are, will not stop working with government. So what they will do to uh, help government to pay them so that they can also continue to work and get in, not get in there. I, I don't want this to do the, the blame game because if when President Kofo was leaving office, the way he managed the road sector is what the, the same as the NDC managed when they were leaving office. I don't think they would be able to manage the roads as they did. They did not leave any good legacy on road for us. They left that mess. They left us dead. You can't just, I, I went to the, I was chasing on the Kota Road in the 2000, part of the 2016 elections. We've done everything, we left with our word of contract and it was delaying. So I went to the feeder rules prior to 2016 election to find out whether I would be able to get the contractor's letter for him to move to site. And I saw contract work awarding haphazardly left center. I asked myself, do you keep in tracks of the contracts that you are working, that the contractor worked to the feeder rules and he returns with a contract letter? That is the resource of what we are facing today. Okay. And it is no and never again no. should any government put this country in the mess, the mess that we are seeing today, the mess that you are worth contract more than what the Ministry of Rules and Highways can contain. Thank you very much. We've been speaking to Samaya Paya, who's the 
<laughs> MP for Ayunsiano and also the chairman of the parliamentary committee on roads. All right, so whilst we're on air, we just got a message from the vice chairman of the Ghana Construction Chamber who's denying that $2.2 billion has been paid to contractors. He says, Ben, I'm watching your program now. No $2.2 billion has been credited to pay contractors. I'm the national vice chair of the Ghana Construction Chamber. Okay. So that's in reaction to what uh, Mr. Ayepai has said to me. We'll try and unravel this. Just final quick comments from you, uh, Adam. Um, I'm calling you Adam now. <laughs> <laughs> Abdullah. Yep. Uh, I, I see one of the reasons why we have this delay. Mm. Apart from government not having money to pay on time, the sequence, the process in which the certificate goes through before it gets to even the head office. You see, the contractor, let's say, I'm using an example I wrote in this is, is in region. Mm -hmm. The contractor is a certificate. He gives it to the consultant. The consultant will now vet because he's on the project. He vets the, the certificate. He takes the regional Ghana Highways Authority. Mm. They go through. They call the consultant for, for clarity. It goes to the regional minister's office. For what? Wow. It can stay in the regional minister's office for more than a month. You know, when the contractor submit that, 91 cleared this after that, we have to start counting the interest in delay payment. And the process at which, how does the Minister, uh, minister, of, uh, the minister of the Region vet a certificate when he's not a technical person? Then after that, it comes to the head office in Accra. Wow. Then the Ghana High will vet it. If they have credit, they will call the consultant. Then it goes to the, regional, the, that's the Ghana High Authority, the, the ministry, before it to go to the Minister of Finance. Look at the chain. Before it gets to the Ministry of Finance, for them to even go through certification and other things. Well, so on, on, on average, it's over th how many? Three months? Yes, because it, sometimes you go to the regional minister's office and it's there. That's when the political shots are called. If you don't come and do something, the, the certificates are there. So we have to cut the bureaucracy out of the process. Because the regional office has nothing to do with the certificate. You have employed a consultant being paid about 5 to 6% of the contract sum. He's experienced enough to vet the, the mm -hmm. IPC takes to the head office in Accra, they will vet through it, and it will go to the regional, uh, the, the ministry, where they have also, also have technical men. Let, let me end with two final comments. Hello, Bernard. This is the probable roads are a serious threat to economic development. Can we be allowed to use our roads? Can we be allowed to pay our fees and then the money used for roads? <laughs> Bernard, if you think these roads that you are showing are bad, try the Borga, Borga Boku Road and Pusiga Polimakom Road. It's an eyesore. David in Boku. Kobitando. Good evening, Bernard. Try Dodowa Road. We pay toll on it. At the point of payment, it's even worse. Very soon, we'll demonstrate to sh show that our road is bad. Try Tema Road, it's also very bad. Finally, John Yalmon says, Good evening, Bernard. I suggest that politicians should not use road construction to campaign during election because road construction needs huge capital. Thanks and good evening to your guests. Th uh, thank you very much, Engineer. Uh, Muhammad Abdullahi, he said, We call him a resident engineer. <laughs> I also spoke to the MP for Ian Suyano and the chairman of the committee on roads, Samo Ayepe, and, and I spoke to Kwame Agboja who's the MP for Adaklu and the ranking member of the committee. Thank you for watching. Stay with City TV. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on City TV's YouTube channel. Subscribe for more videos on The Point of View. My name is Bernard Avale. Thank you.